So, welcome to the course on uh, approximations and surrogates in engineering design. That is the title of the course, but the focus of this course is in the context of design. Practically, we will focus on structural design, but it could be on any design, any engineering design. More specifically, we will be looking at the framework of optimization. Basically, optimization is seen as resource optimization. In structural engineering, you would look at minimizing the weight. In such, in such cases, how can you organize this into a nice mathematical structure so that you can solve it algorithmically is what engineering optimization is about, which we will cover for the first part of the course. It will be introduction to engineering optimization. As you would have uh, learnt or you still most of your research students, so you keep using functions to represent uh, uh, physical characteristics. These functions, there is a big assumption that they represent the physical nature or they are expected and we hope that they will represent the physical nature of the problem at hand. Then we deal with these functions to certain types of solutions that we are interested in or quantities that we are interested in deriving from them. The underlying assumption is you have this function that captures your physical characteristic that is what the assumption is. But this model that we are talking about or the function that we are talking about need not capture the entire physics. Okay. There is a little bit of an uncertainty, there is a little bit of an error and it is an approximation. For instance, for you to relate to a finite element model okay, is a representation or it is just a model, it is modeling, it is a numerical modeling technique if you think about it. It just captures how a particular structure deforms what are the stresses in that. If you change the element, the values are likely to change. That is why you do grid convergence studies whether it is finite element or CFT or you can use simulink to model any characteristic. Okay. Now we need to understand what are the limitations of this model. Okay, that is also an important part of it. But why did I talk about models? Uh, being approximations of the physical characteristic is because this course deals about such things in the context of optimization. During optimization, you need to have these functions where you will go find gradients, you want to minimize something, you want to maximize something, there are some constraints that you need to uh, satisfy, you should not violate. And these functions are not readily available. In a classical course on optimization, we will give you the functions take fg and h and you go and optimize. This is what a classical course on optimization does. That is important because you know how to deal with the solution steps in that case. But in reality, we would not have these functions in closed form. So, there are many things that we might want to do in that sense is we need to know how to construct these functions. The moment you say I am going to construct this function, it does not come directly out of physics. Sometimes it might, but sometimes it does not come out of physics. I give you a complex structure, I give you a complex loading and I ask you, can you find out how it is going to deform for this particular load? What might be the way that you would or what is the way that you adopt to find the, uh, let us say the stress of the deflection. Okay, this is interactive by the sense and they made sure it is interactive, right? So, you will have to respond to my questions. So, if I give you a complex structure with a complex loading mechanism and I ask you to find the deflection and stresses, I am interested in the maximum deflection and the stresses, how would you go about doing it? Software also in one sense uses mathematics. So, the answer was that. So, you would try to use a because you do not have a closed form solution. That is why I put the word complex structure. Most of our solutions that we have analytical solutions for displacement and stresses are for simple structures is what you have. When you have a complex structure, you do not have that. And one way to do that is as he pointed out, it is software is, a, is what we look at. But software is also an approximation. Okay. It tries to approximate the actual displacement and the stresses with the known mathematics that I mean with yeah with the mathematics that we know that is what it tries to do. So, if you use a software, it is an approximation. The moment you say approximation, it captures the physics only partially, okay. even the best model there is a little bit of an error. So, this error in modeling will propagate into your analysis also and hence in the result. 
So, you need to know how this error is propagating and how will that affect my results. Okay. So, it is important because all these models are associated with some kind of an error or an uncertainty because practically you cannot use infinite number of elements in a finite element or a CFD model. You need to limit them. So, it becomes important for an engineer to appreciate this because an engineer is the one who is going to design any kind of a structure. You are the one who are going to model some kind of uh, functions that will capture the physics of the problem. So, you need to know how these errors in the models will propagate into your analysis and hence into your results and how will I look at my results accordingly. Okay. So, this course overall will talk about such things, but to be more specific bullet point wise we will the first part of the course will introduce you to basic engineering optimization. So, we will talk about how what basic problem formulation is, what is the uh, uh, the general structure of an optimization problem is. We will discuss very simple iso contour uh, kind of uh, objective functions and constraints and how to find uh, uh, the minimas or the maximas. Uh, we will talk about uh, sufficiency condition, necessary conditions. We will touch up on a little bit on Karush Kantakar conditions okay. and Lagrangian multiplier we will introduce. We will not go into the concept discussion and all that. We will introduce uh, Karush Kantakar condition. Uh, of course, uh, I assume that uh, you all being graduate students you know what a gradient is. You know slope in 1D becomes gradient in 2D and higher dimensions because that. So, those kind of normal vector and all that is some information that you already know about. So, we will skip the most elementary part of it. We will focus on the elementary part of the engineering part not, not on the math part. Uh, on the engineering part we will focus on the elementary uh, elements that will be for the first part. Then the second part what I will do is I will introduce something called the design of experiments. Okay. Uh, whenever we are interested in such approximations basically you need to have some values of the response that you are interested in otherwise you cannot go and approximate. You need to have some feel. So, where and how do I within the design space where and how do I get these responses is what design of experiments is all about. So, classically people like Taguchi and all that propose techniques like orthogonal array which is which has its own advantages and limitations, but those are focused mostly on the manufacturing sector ok. How to reduce the variation in the manufactured components and all that. But later when what we call as the design and analysis of computer experiments called DACE, okay. DACE stands for design and analysis of computer experiments. When computer models try to replace your experimental models, people try to use design of experiments in a computational sense not on the physical sense. Then they were able to come up with uh, space filling techniques, okay. it is called space filling means there is you have a design uh, space and then you want to uh, maximize the information in the design space. So, you can from an information theory perspective also you can do a, a design of experiment, you can do from a game theory perspective you can do a design of experiment. So, we will look at something called a space filling technique, primarily we will look at something called LHS Latin hypercube samples in that. And after that, um, so this will be the, the, the second part that we will focus and once you have the design of experiments, you have the design points then you can go and generate the responses at those points then you will have to fit a surface or a line de depending on what dimension it is that will eventually become the functions for you to optimize. So, this is how we will proceed. So, first we will look at basic optimization, then we will look at design of experiments, then at those design of experimented points you will run the simulations and you will have a set of responses. Using those responses you will fit some surfaces which will be used in the optimization. So, you will get some results but you know that there are some errors in this uh, approximations that you built. You need to see how those errors will propagate in the optimization solution that you have ok. This is what. So, if I remove the optimization part from the discussion, this still exists as a separate discussion ok. If I remove the DOE part from the discussion, it still exists as a meta model. So, if you look at it, each part of what we are going to discuss is independent in themselves ok. You do not need to know where these points came from. I can just give you a bunch of data and say can you tell me for this x1, x2, x3 what is going to be my y. That is this, that is an independent problem by itself ok. However, if you are trying to do an optimization 
you would like to have a functional relationship between x and y and you want to find a good combination of x or y or given a target y you want to find the x and all that okay. So, in that case then you need to know you will start asking these questions like at what des in the design space at what points did you generate these okay. What happens if I use some other set of points that is what is the design of experiments okay. And uh, the design of experiment influences your meta model okay. The meta model will influence your optimization result. So, it is a cyclic problem. So, uh, hence it is good to set it in the context of design and analyze it okay. Today people are talking about big data analysis and all that yes. So, there if you see there is no scars it is always it is usually big people do not know what to do with a lot of information okay. But design problems are not like that. But in design problems you do not have data that is where the problem is okay. When you are trying to design something if you are a wise engineer uh, if uh, you know you get something for free in a technical sense what you would ask for God comes up to you and then says I will give you one wish what do you want okay. Of course, you cannot ask for monetary benefits what you should ask for is what will you ask for? Let us say that you are trying to design all of your you are trying to design an offshore structure sorry. Can you give me design data not general data can you give me design data okay. So, this question will get repeated during the course multiple times okay and your answer also should get upgraded because the course will get slowly upgraded in the version that we are talking about okay. So, I will keep asking this question if God appears to you what will you ask at this point with your learning from optimization what will you ask with your learning from design of experiment what will you ask uh, with your learning from meta model what will you ask. So, your answer to that is will reflect what you understand out of the course that we are talking about okay. Anyway, so you want more data okay, but in design you do not have more data when you are trying to do a new product development okay. So, right now we are uh, looking at a product uh, biomedical device okay. So, the other day what happened is we called some guy uh, who manufactures these kind of devices and we asked see here is a technology we would like to give it off okay. So, he said oh this is an excellent uh, technology okay, but the problem is I really do not know what the market for this is okay. Let us say that you developed an ultrasound machine which is of low cost today only I will do the MOU and take it from you because I know that there is a market for an ultrasound machine. This is a very good product I understand, but I really do not know what the market is. So, it is possible for us to create the market, but that is a different ball game. So, that is a data for instance okay. So, like that if you take a device for instance and then it is working okay, but if you want to understand the characteristics of that okay. If I ask you what happens if you are going to increase the thickness or decrease the thickness or you are going to strengthen this there are correlations between these stuff you do not know. You will have to run some simulations or you will have to run some experiments which is going to cost you in terms of time, energy, money okay. Because when I said why energy and time is because you cannot just given a model you cannot just go and build a finite element model you need to know what it does okay. Material models we do not have today okay it is all approximate only. How do you get the approximations? Have anyone does nonlinear finite element here? When I say nonlinear, the material nonlinearity I am talking about. Anything, not even material nonlinearity, plasticity, someone does. How many of you use finite element? Oh, no one uses finite element, is it? Okay, fine. Okay. So, but you know what finite element is, right? Finite element methods you know. So, for instance, if you take, uh, okay, we will come to that a little, no, we will do this, maybe I will add and delete later, okay. Many things we use in real life are actually approximations which we do not look it up from that front. So, look at it why is this course so important is if you want to know a stress or a strain okay, what is the basic knowledge that you need to know uh, you need to have about it or in a simple strength of materials course which is the first uh, element that is taught that relates stress and strain. Elastic modulus okay, but elastic modulus also comes in form of what? Some law that is exposed Hooke's law. Hooke's law. So, what Hooke's law says is theoretical. It says within the elastic zone your stress and strain are okay. So, from that relation okay from whatever that theory says you get a quantity which is what he said elastic modulus I will get okay. What that says is
its course goes like this right. How and where did you get this graph from? Because whatever the graphs that you have in those textbooks are all okay. These are all called the fitted graphs. In reality, what happened? But in no textbook, you would see. then you would get a graph like that. So be it for at each site you have to go and do few samples, at each site you have to go and do few samples, then you will have that is what the ASTM standard says, it is not a single point and then you do it. So, all these are also data driven if you would like to call it because we assume that these functions, the, this is the way that it is taught to us, okay. But what is happening here is there is a bit of approximation that goes into it, okay. So, usually when you come here also in the yield quantity that you want we do not get too much into the details, but if you are a material science engineer, they will ask for an upper limit and a lower limit, okay. Because if I do another test for the same type of specimen, this one is likely to vary, okay. So, it could be an experimental error, it could be a material defect from the manufacturing sense. So, you can never have a deterministic material, okay. But that takes the discussion slightly in a different sense, it becomes a uncertainties okay how to quantify the uncertainties and propagate that is not what we are going to talk about. What we are saying is even this is a material model we just say Young's model is but that Young's model is over years and years of experience and people get those information okay. But there is always an uncertainty that is associated with it one of the reason for that uncertainty is also your modeling error okay. For a simple cantilever beam you need to use a highly refined mesh to get the exact value that you will get. But in reality, you will not get that value because in reality, you cannot mimic what you do on the computer and what you do in the closed form solution, okay. There is always be manufacturing issues, okay. Your boundary condition, you will not get the exact boundary condition as modeled in the computer model, okay. It is all, it is a, it is a vicious cycle if you see. We usually teach it the other way. In reality, it is like this, your computer cannot catch, but it can also be seen this way. Okay. This is what your computer models, but in reality it is not that. Okay. So, there is limitations on both sides. Okay. So, this is for instance, this is a data driven approximation. It is very similar. It is very similar as what we will do, but we will look it up from a response perspective. In this case, this is a response that is of interest, but the variable need not be, I mean it is really not a variable in this case, but let us say this was x and not epsilon okay. and then I can have y. Okay then it becomes a surface here, okay. That is what we, so to put the context, we are going to talk about design in general, okay. So, the design itself is complex in nature and one thing that you have to understand about design in general is it is iterated, okay. And it is also iterated. Why it is iterated is because usually you have alternatives okay. And what is your interest the moment you have alternatives? When you have multiple alternatives, you want to buy a cell phone. This can be casted as a design problem, okay. Not, not making the cell phone that is also a design problem. So, let us say that you are interested in buying a cell phone. Do you think that there is only one cell phone? So, there are lot of cell phones today which means each one of them is an alternative for you, but not all of them is an alternative for you. Why? You have some specific needs, specific needs, specific limitations, those become your objectives and your constraints, okay. So, design always, the, the, the moment you say design, it means that there are alternatives and when you have alternatives, what would be your goal? So, you go to a company today, okay. So, you go to a cell phone shop, you say I want a cell phone, 
okay or you even go to a hotel you say i want idli you you go to a good hotel let's say okay don't ask me what hotel but you go to a good hotel okay so you go there and then you say i want idli you think the the guy will go and bring idli directly or what is this, the server's response is going to be when you say idli yeah quantity is one thing yeah so is he he's going to ask do you want plain idli do you want rava idli do you want that idli do you want mini idli do you want macro idli whatever that is right so there are alternatives okay now the moment there are alternatives okay leave your idli example come back to your cell phone example the moment you have alternatives what would govern your choice cost is one thing that will govern your choice but let's say that you are again swift back to the idli example so there are multiple choices right so what do you think is going to govern your depends on your what is your appetite at that point in time uh, if you know the cost and if you worry about the cost for idli yes okay but idlis are like tens tens of rupees right for cell phone cost makes lot of sense okay like 8000 20000 30000 so for cell phone cost makes sense but for idli uh, it's it's really not at this point right so appetite at that point in time taste could be one thing what is served in the next uh, uh table also might influence your decision so the why i left out the social i mean uh, left out the idli example is because there are a lot a lot of social factors in a cell phone also there is a social factor called uh, the you know it's seen as a status symbol and you want to have peer pressure and all that okay but we are not talking about that but if you look at it people uh, we call like uh, social scientists okay today we use abstract mathematics to represent certain things in in social sciences there we will capture all these things okay like uh, uh, why an interior of a house should not be painted red for instance okay there is a social factor that is involved with that okay so now what happens is when you have an alternative why i gave all these examples is the moment you have multiple alternatives what is going to govern your choice okay which idli are you going to order which cell phone are you going to get even when you filter it down based on the cost based on your needs you are still going to have alternatives you are saying my cost is 10000 rupees i need a good battery backup i need a good selfie camera kind of a stuff it should have a high mega everything then you still have alternatives okay so but for you to come from this much different cell phones to this much there were some criteria that made things for you like right? so that let you make so this criteria becomes important what is the criteria that will govern my choice okay so for the same product he is going to ask for a battery backup meaning for the same price for instance he is going to ask for a battery backup he may ask for a selfie camera he may ask for larger data capability someone might ask for a good uh, audio uh, stuff in that and there are n number of features right for the same product same type of product meaning the choices might differ so is the case with an automobile for instance if you take an automobile there are multiple alternatives for the same cost you have a width of stuff someone is focused on the uh, the efficiency of fuel someone is co considered on very good in aesthetics someone is covered on power but if you look at it many of these are conflicting okay the idea is you want to have as many packed into the same stuff but usually these are conflicting if you want a very good power then you might not have efficiency in it okay if you have a very good aesthetics maybe you might not have a power in that maybe okay so but we would like to bring this trade off together okay that's why it's called a trade off i would like to have as much as possible in the same system okay that is also uh, the overall idea of optimization so but <clears throat> coming back to the even the criteria if you look at it from a design perspective there is one basic question that people usually ask is what is the difference between design and analysis is there a difference at all is there a difference between design and analysis the very fact that you have two different words tells you that they are different what is the difference between design and analysis after design 
after design analysis comes. So, after analysis there is no design. Okay. Analysis make sure that design works. Analysis makes sure that design works. Okay. To be more politically correct, analysis not make sure, analysis says how a particular design works or what is the quantity of interest. Correct. Now, I ask you to design a cantilever beam. Okay. So, cantilever beam means tip load because this is what we have understood from <laughs> interviews. The moment you say draw a cantilever beam, immediately we will go draw a cantilever beam and put a tip load. Okay. So, let us take that assumption. There is a tip load, there is a cantilever beam. Okay. What are the logical questions that you are expected to answer? I mean, expected to ask me. Sorry? dimension of the beam okay so we will go to the cantilever beam problem so you are going to ask for dimension so in dimension what all will you ask ah cross section dimensions, you will ask cross section dimensions, someone said length, okay. then material properties, okay. sorry, load, yeah load, okay. good, yes it is dependent on load, okay. Ha. Huh. So, this guy, but did you def, did you decide, did I tell you that it is a square, it is hollow. So, basically there is, but is it going to affect? Yes, provided this is what we are talking about, then okay. So, this is affected by your cross section. Right. So, then of course, your material property is this guy, then L is given. Okay. So, now the question is this is an alternative, am I going to have a circular cross section, am I going to have a hollow cross section, am I going to have a square cross section, am I going to have a I beam, can I have a C beam okay. or rather not like this, that is a C not a C beam should I have something like this? There are so many options, can I have a triangular cross section? The one classical stuff that we use is this and this or rather this also. There is a need, why will you use an I-beam? Of course, it there is some specific reasons where you will use an I-beam. Any column in our buildings are also load carrying structures. Okay. But this is rectangular in cross section and that is I beam in cross section. What is the difference? Transverse load. Okay. White to load carrying capacity. Sorry? White to load carrying capacity. White to? Wait, wait, wait to load carrying capacity. Yeah. Uh, sorry, always uh, weight is less for the given outer dimension. Uh, the I beam always saves weight compared to obviously because if I put a rectangle like this outside that, I beam always I am carving out information. Right? It is not a strength of material course, but we will tell. Okay. So, the deal is under certain conditions, I works better. Okay. So, in any of the uh, structures that you go and see in the workshop for instance, any of the rails that you have, okay, it will only be I beam. Okay. It works good under bending conditions it is very good. Okay. So, but why not for our column structures then? It might also have other types of it is not only bending, I could just have some kind of a compressive load for instance. Okay. Buckling could be a situation that could happen and of course, there are also seismic loads if you think about it which we do not worry too much, but that is also there. Okay. So, in such situations we do not choose it, but 
what I am saying is for the same type of cantilever beam depending on what your application is you would choose the different things. So, that criteria could be your application ok, could be what your goal is ok, I want to reduce weight and I will have the criteria as my constraint as well. So, the criteria is the one that lets you choose which one of this I am going to take ok. So, now that process is called design and it is iterative please understand you did this you will figure out that it is not ok and then you go back and then change a little bit in the design ok. That, but that you need to know whether you have uh, rights on changing L, you have rights on changing E, you have rights on changing I ok. So, then what is analysis? So, deciding what these are is your design. When I put that into the equation, what will my displacement B is called analysis. Sir, what is the big deal? We know P L Q by 3 E I. Let us say that I am lazy, I do not even want to calculate this, I put it in a Excel sheet. You just give me what E I R I is, it will give me delta. What is the analysis? True, putting it in Excel sheet is analysis. Okay. Now, the moment I make this cantilever beam slightly complex, slightly complex, you cannot use this equation anymore. Immediately what you will do, that was the first question that I asked you. You take the help of a software which essentially divides this into multiple elements, uses some partial differential equation to solve that. So, this part and are an equivalent of this in a computer model and solving it is what is we call as analysis. So, if you look at it analysis is a is a step in design for a given combination of dimension material property and loads you go and plug that into your computer model it will tell you what your response is. So, that is one analysis. So, for you to have an idea of for a given length, for a given cross section, for a given load I need to know what my displacement is where I do not have my explicit equation. If you do not have this you need to run a computer model then only the analysis will say oh this stress is too large sorry this displacement is too large that is not that is much more than my allowable displacement. So, immediately you can just use your uh, simple common sense to say probably I need to reduce my length or I need to let us say that it is uh, more then you need to reduce your length. One way to do that would be to reduce your length or you need to change your material property accordingly or play around with your eye depending on what you have uh, where you have control what you can change. So, these are sometimes in some text these are called control variables in the context of optimization these are called what variables? They are called design variables because they govern the design they tell you these guys. So, they are called the design variables when you modify the design variable the response is likely to change ok. That is called analysis for each combination of my design variables what is my response value is called an analysis and multiple analysis is typically encompasses a design because every time what happens is under the context of design you will have to have an analysis done and you will have a design variable. For a particular design variable I do this analysis I check whether my criteria is ok ok and then yes no if it is no it goes back changes my design variable comes back in this. If it is yes look for convergence that we will talk stop. So, in this whole stuff this analysis is an iterative thing that is what I told that design itself is an iterative stuff ok. We are not even going into a new product development or a new product design because then you will have to go into user 
requirement analysis and then choose the material after doing an analysis you will figure out that this is not what it is you go back and change the entire design okay that's not what we are talking about we know that you need a cantilever beam we know that you are going to do a electric scooter you are going to do a, a crankshaft for a particular automobile uh, so we know all that in that specifically what or how you are going to change the design is what the question is okay so if you look at it people talk uh, this is also uh, uh, what you call like interdisciplinary okay so one requires a mechanical background the other one would require a civil background someone something might require an electronics background but the the technology for you to let you or the algorithms that allow you to make this decision is the same in terms of optimization okay okay so this is just to tell you what an analysis is what uh, uh, criteria is and what is a uh, design these are all subsets of a design but why are we talking this in the context of optimization okay this whole stuff that i'm talking about can be cast into an optimization problem which is what we are interested in 